In this video, I'll demonstrate the Durbin-Watson statistic as it is used for testing autocorrelations for significance. When it comes to something like single case design research, we need to be wary of autocorrelation and the Durbin-Watson statistic is a fairly easy to use uh, method of testing autocorrelation effects. The uh, original publication of the statistic was in 1951 where Durbin and Watson published the information in Biometrica, volume 38. That uh, journal is kind of hard to get sometimes, but fortunately the article has been republished over the years several times in book chapter format. So if you uh, try to get the article through interlibrary loan, it's highly likely that you'll get it as I did in the form of a republished version of the article, not the original article. If you do have access to JSTOR, you, uh, I believe, get the original article from Biometrica. Otherwise, uh, the interlibrary loan will produce one of the book chapters instead. What they proposed is a probability distribution, and this is the original graphic that went in, in the article. Uh, K prime is the number of groups, N is the sample size or number of observations, and higher scores are better. I won't go into the calculation of the actual score, uh, but um, we're just going to interpret the graph here. So higher scores are better, and what you can see here, following the uh, mouse, is the dash line is the separation between the lower boundary and the upper boundary. What Durbin Watson specified in their article was that uh, very low scores are significantly autocorrelated. So if you fall below this threshold, then you have a problem with autocorrelation. If you fall above the upper threshold, then you're not autocorrelated. And if you're somewhere in between, then you have the possible outcome of autocorrelation. It might be something of concern. So again, very low scores, it's significantly autocorrelated. Very high scores, it's not autocorrelated. And anything in between, you run the risk of having some issue with autocorrelation. So how do we make sense of this graph? Well, first, if you're doing single case design research, and this video is uh, put together for uh, single case design researchers, such as school psychologists and ABA uh, researchers, applied behavior analysis researchers. So typically, uh, with single case design research, you have a single group, and you might have multiple uh, measurement periods for that uh, single group. And I'm just, you know, a single group, I mean a single individual. Um, even if you had multiple individuals, it's really the same group. So I'm just going to assume that uh, k prime equals 1 for this application. n would be the number of observations. Uh, and typically, in single case design research, you have less than 20 observations. So we're dealing with a small sample of data. We would be down here on the x-axis. So if k is 1, you match the line over here for the lower boundary. That's the one that designates significantly high autocorrelation. So everything here is reversed. Keep that in mind. So following it over, this is the threshold right about here, more or less, for the typical single case design study. You don't want your uh, Durbin-Watson statistic to be any lower than this. That would indicate significant autocorrelation. So let's map it out. If we have only one group, and I put group in parentheses or scare quotes, because, um, you know, I'm not really sure how we would apply uh, the group situation in this uh, type of research. I'm just going to assume that the group is one. And the number of observations typically is less than 20, and that would put us right about here. So our critical value is about 1.08. And if you consult with a, um, uh, a good stats textbook like Andy Field's uh, 
has a wonderful stats textbook. Uh, he does have a section on the Durbin-Watson statistic. He says that uh, as a general rule, a conservative approach would be anything less than one would be significant. But he urges uh, readers to check with the original article, uh, which is this article. So based on the parameters of your study, if you have more observations or more groups, so to speak, uh, then you would be uh, located further out in the curve. Further out down here for uh, more groups, but further up if you have larger sample sizes. So even with five groups, if you have 100 uh, observations, cross-index that, and it's going to put your critical value about 1.5. So it really depends on uh, those two parameters, uh, the sample size and the number of groups. Now this curve that they presented is one-tailed, uh, but it is possible to have negative autocorrelations. And Durbin and Watson simply state that um, you revise the function in the form of 4 minus d. And again, I'm not going to go into the computation of d here. That's not the purpose. Because of the 4 minus d approach that Durbin and Watson used, this statistic essentially becomes a five-point scale, where 2 is the midpoint. Higher scores represent negative autocorrelations, and low scores represent positive autocorrelations. You want your value on the Durbin and Watson statistic to be as close to 2 as possible to eliminate any possibility of high or low or I should say, positive or negative autocorrelations. So the critical value for a single case design study with less than 20 observations uh, would be something like this. Anything less than 1.08 or anything uh, greater than 2.92 would be a significant level of autocorrelation. So now, let me give you an example uh, with some actual numbers. Let's go over to SPSS. I've got a file here with some fake data. I've got one variable that's highly autocorrelated and one variable that's got low levels of autocorrelation. I'm not going to use phase here. That's from a different uh, video. Uh, so if you actually go and watch my video on autocorrelation, I use a different data set, but I use the phase um, designation or phase variable there. But what we need here to actually get the Durbin Watson statistic is a variable called time, which is your measurement uh, phase, your measurement period. So you, in this particular hypothetical, we've got 10 measurement periods in the baseline phase and another 10 measurements in the treatment phase. So each uh, measure has to be uh, indicated by numerical value of equal intervals. First, let's get the autocorrelations for these uh, two variables, the high and the low autocorrelation. To get the autocorrelations, we go to forecasting, autocorrelations. You see that I already tested it out here. We don't need the partial correlations for this example. I can put both of my variables over here. Uh, if I reset it to what it looks like when you first open it up, you see that all the variables are on the left side carry whichever variables over that you want to test. And this is not going to give us the Durbin-Watson statistic. It's only going to give us the autocorrelation. And you can see that in options, there is no option here for the Durbin-Watson statistic. So I click OK. And for the high autocorrelation data set, for the one lag autocorrelation, which is what's normally reported, we have a very high positive autocorrelation of 0.858. And I'm going to ignore all the other information here. For the low autocorrelation data set, we have a relatively low value of 0.49. Now it tells us a significance value, but this is not the Durbin Watson stat. You can see that it's got the superscript of B. And down here in the footnote, it says, based on asymptotic chi-square approximation. Well, that's not the test that we want. 
what, what we really want is the Durbin Watson. Um, and all of these ones here are significant. But again, that's not the Durbin Watson. So in order to get the Durbin, so if, if you wanted to report the autocorrelation, this is the pathway to get it. But this is not the, uh, as far as I understand, not the appropriate significant value uh, for that uh, autocorrelation. To get the autocorrelation Durbin-Watson statistic, we need to set up a regression equation. And let me reset it. Start from scratch. Um, for the high auto variable, I put that in dependent, and I'm going to put time as my independent variable. And under option, or actually under statistics, we go over here, and you have to ask for the Durbin Watson. It is not provided automatically. So that's the one that we want, and that's the only thing that we need here. When we run the data, uh, here we have a value 1.047 and that is below the lower threshold of 1.08 that I specified for my graphic from the original uh, Durbin Watson article. So I would consider this to be more or less a flagrant violation of autocorrelation according to the Durbin Watson stat. But notice that it doesn't give us a p-value here which uh, it's it's an old statistic, and it's, it's kind of a um, roundabout way of analyzing it. So let's try it with the other variable, with the low autocorrelation variable. Let's pull that one over. And by way of comparison, this one for the low autocorrelation data set has a Durbin-Watson statistic that is very, very, very close to 2 where 2 is what you would expect if there is virtually no autocorrelation. So we do have some autocorrelation. It was uh, 0.49, I think, 0.481, something like that, um, which in the, in the scope of the magnitude of a correlation seems like it's pretty large. Uh, but based on the parameters of the Durbin-Watson statistic, it is very close to what we'd expect to see based on uh, random appearance of the numbers. So that's how, uh, that's how we judge the autocorrelation effect for single case design. Uh, if you wanted to report this, I would report both the autocorrelation as well as the Durbin-Watson statistic. The autocorrelation at uh, a single lag. So if we go back up here to the low auto, just report the lag 1 autocorrelation effect, 0.491. And then uh, it doesn't get a p-value as far as I know. But you would want to also report the Durbin-Watson statistic. Uh, and if you feel so inclined, you can cite the original article for Durbin-Watson if you want to get into the weeds of trying to read this graphic the critical value here for a single case design study would be anything less than 1.08 or anything greater than 2.92. Well, I hope that is useful for you uh, and good luck with your research.